this video, we're going to take a look at one of the most popular breeds in the world and taking a deep dive into the history of the Beagle. Funny enough, it took a very long time for this breed to be developed. Welcome back to the Fenrir Beagle Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Charlie and I'm a certified canine leader here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. Everything we do here is dedicated to helping you find the perfect breed for you and then helping you become a high level canine leader who can raise the perfect canine companion. If that sounds like you, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to make sure you never miss another upload. Let's dive into today's video. The Beagle is an old breed like many other old breeds. Pinpointing their exact origin is impossible, even just for the origin or the name. There are many disputes surrounding that. Some experts say it derives from the Gaelic word beag, meaning little, but others claim it comes from the French term beagle, for the sound hounds make whilst hunting. In either case, we can't talk about the magnificent beagle without mentioning the face foot hounds. It was quite easy to keep up with the pack of beagles on foot, unlike some of the larger pack hunters like the foxhound or the harriers. Beagles are absolutely vital for those that didn't own a horse or too old to spend hard days galloping across the countryside on horseback. In fact, by the 1500s, most English gentlemen had packs of large hounds to track deer and other animals on horseback and smaller hounds for tracking hair on foot. Today, our adorable beagles come in two varieties. Those who stand under 13 inches at the shoulder, weighing in at under 20 pounds, and those between 13 and 15 inches, weighing between 20 to 30 pounds. Both varieties are sturdy and solid and come in colours like lemon, red and white and tricolour to go with their huge brown hazel eyes. Beagles are pack dogs and some of the most friendly and curious dogs you'll find. They're amazing hunters and loyal companions. You'd find them in many jobs today, including drug dogs and pest detection. Their smaller size makes them a good fit for many living situations. To take a good look at their history, let's jump back to the 8th century. In the 8th century, an early saint hound existed called the Saint Hubert Hound. From them, a newer breed called the Talbot Hound was developed. They were mostly white in colour and had a deep bark. Their nose work was good, but their short legs made them slow and not the best choice for hunting. It wasn't until the 11th century where William the Conqueror brought the Talbot to England. Because Talbots were so slow, they were bred with the Greyhound to increase their speed. This faster, new breed was called the Southern Hound. It's thought another breed developed in the northern part of England, called the Northern Country Beagle, or just the Northern Hound, was also developed from interbreeding Talbots and Greyhounds with French Hounds. The Southern Hound was the larger of the two, with much better scent abilities. The Northern Hound was smaller and faster, and often used for deer hunting. From around the 5th century onwards, the word beagle generally referred to any hound dog. There were accounts of small hounds called pocket beagle that measured only around 8 to 9 inches at their shoulders that were popular before going extinct in the 20th century. These tiny beagle dogs were small enough to fit in a pocket or saddlebag. Once the larger hounds found the prey, hunters would let the little dogs loose to chase through brush. It wasn't until the year 1830 when Reverend Philip Honeywood started a beagle breeding programme that did the modern beagle really become to be. Honeywood's beagles were smaller than today's average, only standing at 10 inches at the shoulder, and they were pure white. Record keeping was not done as well as we'd hoped, so aside from the southern hound and the northern hound, not much is known about the other dogs he may have used in his programme. There were other packs of beagles around as well, but Honeywood's pack was considered the best. Not long after, another man named Thomas Johnson wanted to create an even better breed that looked better and was going to be the perfect hunter. His work produced two versions of the beagle, one with a rough coat and one with a smooth coat. By 1840, both the Northern Country Beagle and the Southern Hounds were lost as their breeds and four beagle types were developed. The medium beagle, the terrier beagle, the rough coat beagle and the fox beagle. These new beagles began making their way across the pond into General Richard Rotwet's breeding programme. Rotwet's beagles were believed to be the model for American standards. The beagle was accepted by the American Kennel Club in 1885. Back in England, a beagle club was created with the intent of preventing the extinction of this magnificent breed. Since by then there were only 18 packs of beagles left. Those who loved the breed were determined, 
and by 1902 the number of packs had risen to 44. That number has continued to rise and beagles have been in the top 10 dog breeds for the last 30 years with near interest continuing to grow every day. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If so, make sure you hit that like button and get involved down on the comments section below. And don't forget if you are new here to make sure you subscribe. We have two dedicated Beagle videos coming here every single week. So I can't wait to talk to you again on the next episode of the Fenrir Beagle Show.